Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be sharing Lesson 12 for August the 21st, 2022. We're still in Unit 3, uh, talking about the great hope of the saints. And our topic for today, taken from our adult quarterly, is No Better Refreshment. Our devotion reading is taken from the book of Psalm uh, 46, uh, verses 1 through 7. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, uh, verses 1 through 7. And we'll also be studying from the book of Revelation today, chapter uh, 22, verses 1 through 7. Our key verse reads, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. That's taken from Revelation chapter 20, 22, uh, verse 1 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to research the biblical references uh, to the river of life to learn its spiritual, symbolic, and material effect on creation. Secondly, to imagine God's provisions to be found in the river of life, which will nourish and heal people and nations in the New Jerusalem. Thirdly, to respond to the river of life through acceptance, faith, and entrance into the fullness of God's kingdom. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson discussion. The first outline is entitled Unending Blessings. The second outline is entitled A New Existence. And the third outline is entitled Divine Confirmation. And we certainly thank and praise God for this great opportunity to be able to share uh, God's Word with you. We pray that you are well and that your families are well. We pray that you would. Uh, engage us in our study today in a lesson that we uh, desperately need um, in terms of uh, helping our hope, um, encouraging our hope in Christ, and certainly uh, helping us to embrace the promises of God even through the redemption through Jesus Christ. And as always, we want you to get your Bible and uh, be prepared to take some notes. We want to share some scripture with you today. Uh, this is a continuation, if you will, from last Sunday's lesson or last week's lesson uh, taken from uh, Revelation uh, chapter 21, uh, verses 10 through 21. And we want to be able to unpack uh, uh, what it means uh, in terms of prophecy. Uh, whether we're talking about um, uh, expounding on the future or we're talking about foretelling. Uh, but we find this, this um, lesson very encouraging for us today, even through uh, the lens of John, uh, the gospel writer, if you will. Uh, we certainly want to be able to encourage us today as we face uh, even as John did in his day he was facing some uncertain times he was uh, being persecuted for his faith um, but he needed to be encouraged uh, and so through revelation through prophecy uh, enlightenment if you will God was accomplishing these things uh, in the writer John and also encouraging him to write about it. So we want to read just a little bit of the uh, biblical context for our lesson today. And I think I want to read this from our lesson standard and then we're going to get into our outlines. But a feature of the New Jerusalem drawn from the Old Testament is the Tree of Life. Uh, this mysterious tree is referred to in the three books in the Bible. Uh, it first appears as an important part of the Garden of Eden. You can see that in Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. Uh, but a tree of life is also mentioned four times in the book of Proverbs as a metaphor 
uh, for divine wisdom. You can see that in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 18. Uh, it also references uh, the fruit of righteousness that's found in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. Uh, desires fulfilled in Proverbs chapter 13 uh, verse 12 and the prophecy used uh, a properly used tongue also in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 4 and so we should note that uh, the tree of life that's mentioned in Revelation is a primary feature of the uh, paradise of God uh, that's Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 so some have referred to this paradise as Eden restored uh, as people eat the fruit of the tree with God's blessing. So I want to stop right there but uh, in the book of Revelation the concept of spiritual water includes the, uh, the property of eternal life. So uh, such water is seen as a divine gift, uh, an ever flowing fountain that provides life to those who drink from it. You can see that in Revelation chapter 7 uh, verse 17 and then uh, Revelation chapter uh, 22 verse 17. So we want to get into our first outline today uh, from the 22nd chapter of the book of Revelation verses 1 through 7. But I want to highlight some points here as we talk about sin and you've heard this uh, I'm sure um, of the course of your walk with the Lord as being saved uh, there are some things that happen as a result of our redemption we have uh, been delivered from the penalty of sin we should understand that uh, secondly we have been delivered uh, from the power of sin right and then thirdly, which will uh, fit nicely into our lesson today in the context, what Christ did for us and will ultimately result from our redemption is to deliver us from the very presence of sin. So as we think about this lesson today, the imagery, the revelation, the prophecy uh, that John is being allowed to see, uh, it gives a lot of details. Uh, uh, John is being taken on a tour, if you will, uh, of the heavenly places and, and, and allowed to see uh, the new city, the new Jerusalem, and the contents. Uh, and he is describing his personal account through the angel touring uh, John through these different areas here. And so John is, is, is talking about what he saw. That's very important because all of us, uh, uh, we have to interpret our walk with the Lord in a way that helps us to understand that God has made significant, significant promises to us. Uh, uh, and so how we interpret those promises is how we live. So uh, if we expect to uh, be refreshed uh, and there is no better refreshment as our uh, uh, title uh, uh, shares with us today. But you've also heard that this is a prepared place for a prepared people. And I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 through 27. So let's get into this first outline um, that talks about unending blessings. This is taken from Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. And I want to read this uh, from the NIV translation. Keep in mind, this is what John is being shown by the angel who is touring him uh, through these different things that, that we are reading about today. The Bible says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Verse 2, down the middle of the great city, of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, 
and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Why is God giving John through uh, uh, this angel so much detail? Uh, uh, and so as, as we think about the promises of God, I want you to think about your faith, how it rests on the promises of God, and then I want you to think about the truth, the accuracy. And when we get there, right when we get to the place that John is describing for us when we behold what God has uh, uh, created and prepared for those who love him and who keep his promises you will find this exact account that John saw you won't get a different account it will be the same right but John gets a, 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 a prelude if you will of what's to come right this is the this is the essence of prophecy uh, uh, that we talk about in terms of of, of uh, 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 discussing or establishing future events right uh, the essence of prophecy is that it has to come to pass and so what God is doing through John is showing him ahead of time right so this will this will this is a blessing on on a blessing. God is showing John ahead of time what things will look like when he arrives. And and John has been uh, 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 so guided and unctioned by the spirit of God that he has recorded these things for us to enjoy now, for us to embrace now, for us to uh, start visualizing the promises of God and you might say well Reverend I don't understand why we have to look at this now well we need encouragement now right we need to uh, uh, be living our lives in 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 a uh, uh, confident expectation of these promises that we are reading about so uh, chapter 21 climaxes with John's description of of the internal character of the New Jerusalem. That's in verses 22 through 27 on, uh, from the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation. So he tells us that the city has no need for the light of the sun and the moon because it's illuminated by the light of God's glory and the Lamb. Watch this. The redeemed people of the earth will walk by its light and enjoy unrestricted access to his presence throughout eternity or for all time. The redeemed people. You remember we talked about that earlier about a prepared place for a prepared people. And I think it's important for us to understand because Sometimes when we're going through things uh, and God is working uh, particular matters out in our lives uh, uh, and we find ourselves dying daily, right? The, the, the outer uh, is decaying, is dying, but the inner man, the inner spiritual man is being renewed day by day. And why is God doing this? Why is God allowing me to go through this process the way that I am? It's because of the promises that God has made. And so what God is doing uh, and what God is showing to, uh, to John here that he has made preparations, right? For the people who have and, and who are going through the process who are enduring preparations in their lives for the preparations that God have made for those individuals, those redeemed individuals who will uh, be residents of, these, uh, of this city and of these promises. But the initial verses of chapter 22 are John's description of the blessings. Watch this awaiting those who dwell with God. Uh, uh, from this description, the interior of the city is like the Garden of Eden. So John was shown the river of the water of life flowing from God's throne in the middle of the city's main street, right? This river is reminiscent of, 
of Eden's river in Genesis chapter 2 verse 10 and its imagery of Ezekiel uh, chapter 47 verses 1 through 12 so in that context Ezekiel saw a purifying river from the temple but this one's source is God and the Lamb Christ right so but here and now we experience temporary refreshment in life but heaven's river is constant uh, accessible stream of blessing and refreshment for God's people remember we talked about being moved and being delivered from the presence the very presence of sin and so the environment right the environment is different right we 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 enjoy temporary refreshment now through uh, 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 the quickening or uh, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit but when we get over there right when we get over there there will be a complete environmental change right and that's what we want uh, if, if you think about how we sort of navigate our lives today we try to get away from the bad parts uh, uh, the negative parts we are always on the move to get away from something but never able to really escape because we're still in this temporary system we're still in this sinful world uh, 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 in a sinful environment but God has made preparations right God has established some things for those who love him and who keep his commandments and so John is getting a glimpse of this right so consequently all believers will be able to eat freely from the tree of life in eternity the tree in John's vision is identified as the counterpart to the tree of life in Eden and you all remember that story the fall the great fall if you will of Genesis 3 what happened with Adam and Eve and how uh, Eve was deceived by the serpent you all know the story and 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 how that environment that they were in was subsequently changed by God because of their disobedience and because of their 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 attitude of uh, of rebellion against God they sinned against God and so that changed everything but God is restoring and has restored everything right for the believer and so we need to be mindful of these things today and don't get so uh, uh, don't lose your focus if you will don't get so caught up in what's going on in this world and even perhaps in your life that you miss the fact that God has done something about uh, uh, what we're going through in the environments that we're living in and so uh, if you remember back over in uh, uh, Jesus high priestly prayer of John 17 uh, Jesus talked about to his father not to take the disciples out of the world but keep them right leave them in the world and keep them so why is he leaving his disciples uh, 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 in this world well when we get there in this context in this lesson we are being left here for a time and a season because we have evangelistic work to do right we shouldn't be just so satisfied with with our redemption but we should want every person that we are able to reach through the gospel message to be a part of this promises and we have something that's credible uh, 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 that through God's authority that we can show them and, 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 and encourage them to be hopeful about the future because God has laid it out in perfect detail for John and then John has written it down and left it as a record for us uh, so we can be able to encourage others but the old the old nature the old environment tainted by sin and its effects is eradicated
for all time. So throughout eternity, the redeemed, right, will enjoy the refreshing blessings of the eternal life in God's presence, right? So when we when we talk about being removed from the presence of sin is because we are in the presence of God. And we do know that no unclean thing can dwell in the presence of God. So this is why we will ultimately be removed from the very presence of of sin and God has a place that has already been established. We're reading about it, right? This is what it is. So we can enjoy it, we can celebrate, and we can be encouraged, we can persevere, we can endure, and we can just settle in to the fact that we are the believers, we are the redeemed of Jesus Christ, and we are going to enjoy these promises, but we must stay the course. That's very important. So faith uh, uh, in this extraordinary promise renews hope and encourages steadfast perseverance. Believers are admonished to refrain from becoming so heavenly minded that they are no earthly good. What are we saying? This means that we, uh, uh, that, that every believer, watch this, must concentrate right on living as spiritual influences by demonstrating righteousness and commitment to carry out Christ's mandate to make disciples or to reproduce what you are right I want you to look at Hebrews uh, chapter 10 uh, verses 35 through 36 so our temporary stay on earth should be uh, uh, girded with the fact that we have work to do. We have an assignment. We are here as sojourners. We have. We are here. Uh, uh, we have been transformed. We have new minds. We have new attitudes. We are. We are going through the process of salvation. Uh, uh, God is preparing us for these promises, so we can be witnesses while we're here. Right? While we're here we have a job to do so identify some practical ways to demonstrate gratitude for the promise of the future spiritual nourishment and refreshment so does obedience mean anything to do uh, 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 mean anything to you in terms of our gratitude does sanctification mean anything to you does does being holy mean anything to you i mean we could go on and on about uh, living this practical thing uh, 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 in an attitude of being grateful for the things that God has done for us, right? We are privileged people. Yes, you are blessed because there's been a position change. So we need to understand that our second outline is entitled A New Existence. This is taken from Revelation chapter 22, verses 3 through 5, and again from the NIV translation no longer will there be any curse the throne of God and the lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him verse 4 they will see his face we are we ought to really take a look at this saints they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads verse 5 there will be no more night they will not need the light of the lamp or the light of the sun for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever for all time right for eternity that's what that means for all time right so this is something the curse of sin, right? That curse of disobedience, that curse that has plagued mankind since Genesis 3, right? Has been removed, and it has been removed through Jesus Christ, through the cross, through Calvary, through the shedding of his blood the brokenness of his body he has redeemed us right and so 
the throne of God, right? We are his servants. We are his friends, right? We are the redeemed. And I like this. We will see his face, right? We will see him as he is. I want you to want to give you the first epistle of John chapter 3 verses 1 through 3 will uh, reference that point but life in God's presence will vastly differ from what we currently experience from John's uh, reported observations according to his description life then will be one of perpetual blessing he also noticed another dramatic change. There is no longer any curse because sin, illness, and death are gone. Adam and Eve's sin barred them from the tree of life and caused their subsequent push out of the garden. The effects of their sin extended beyond the curse of the whole creation. Genesis chapter 3 verses 14 through 19. But in the new Jerusalem, the first Eden's counterpart, creation's curse is permanently removed and nothing occurs will be in God's presence. That's what we shared earlier. So it's important that we understand in, in, a, in a real way, right? As we think about the things that God is doing in our lives and how he is changing us and how he is weeding out these things that cause mankind an issue. Don't you know God knows the pitfalls of life? He knows how we get off track. He understands our weaknesses. Right. And so he he is doing something and has done something about that posture. And so. We don't want to uh, 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 get this mixed up because, again, this is a prepared place for a prepared people. So the saved will also experience the privilege, right? It's a privilege to worship and continually serve God, right? It's a privilege. It's an honor, right? So heaven should not be considered a place of everlasting rest devoid of any responsibilities glorifying him is a privilege accompanied by the dual responsibility of adoration and service you know I, I think about and I, I know you all have heard these statements that uh, people have uh, quoted over the years when they when they get to heaven they gonna do this and they gonna do that and they you know look we are being told through scripture what we are going to be doing we are told in scripture what our responsibilities will be right we are not there to be glorified we are there to give glory to God right so this is not about us this is about him and we need to remember that so our part now is to uh, as our lesson pointed out to us is to believe right we need to believe and we need to accept these principles. We need to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and allow him to do the work in our lives so we can enjoy these promises. Right? That's very important. So we need to remember that what believers service and ministry uh, will be is not detailed but reigning requires more than idle sitting if we reign with him. So additional privilege afforded God's people are, see, are seeing him face to face. That's what blesses me. You know, we've been praying to God for years. We've been talking to God and talking to God and crying out to him and crying out to him about all of these different things that are going on around us and certainly in our lives. But one day, saints, one day, we'll be able to talk to him face to face. We'll be able to see him face to face. That ought to encourage you today that God has prepared these things, right, for us. The redeemed of the ages will realize the, the fruition of the longing 
to look upon his face. The saints will see and know him as he is. That's why I gave you the first epistle of John chapter 3. Uh, verses 1 through 3. I know John is on John is on the tour of his life. You can imagine how how he must have felt as the angel is taking him. And do you notice the scripture details? Do you notice how his memory is intact, John? How he records all of these things? God wants us to know, right? This is the thing that John 16, John chapter 16 helps us to understand about the Holy Spirit. Jesus declared to his disciples that when the Holy Spirit comes, one of his functions, excuse me, is to lead and guide us into all of the truth. And this is where we are in our lesson today. John is being given a tour of his life. He is being given details, right, that only God can provide. Finally, John tells us again that there is no more night because the brilliance of God's glorious presence illuminates the city. The sources of the light in the original creation are no longer needed. Symbolically, this is a reminder that the darkness of sin and its effects are gone and time as we know it will cease to exist. Yet again, John emphasizes the redeems awesome privilege of experiencing the blessings of God's presence. What do you want out of this life, right? Do we want all of the, 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 the things of this world, right? Do we want all the tangible things? Your hope should be bigger than the things of this world. Your outlook should be bigger, should be greater than the finest gold of this world. It should be greater than the finest silver. It should be bigger than the, the biggest diamond of this world, right? But our outlook should be on seeing him face to face, right? This relationship culminating in us being able to look Christ in the face, right? So, we need to appreciate this. So how should knowing uh, you will reign with Christ in his kingdom affect your daily lifestyle? That's a good question. I want to give you Romans chapter 6 verses 12 through 14. And also Romans chapter 8 verses 9 through 17. So our last outline, divine confirmation. This is taken from Revelation chapter 22. Uh, verses 6 and 7 again from the NIV translation. Watch this saints. The Bible said the angel said to me. These words are trustworthy. And true. The Lord. The God who inspires the prophets. Sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Verse 7. Look I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. So we feel more secure when promises are confirmed by those with power <clears throat> and authority to fulfill them. John was allowed to see the blessings and privileges of the redeemed in the new Jerusalem with God. The angel showed that showed him the heavenly city confirmed the authenticity of all he saw because God was its source. Right? God's words are faithful and true. That is trustworthy. It's loyal. It's incorruptible. And it's steady. The truthfulness of his word is validated by the record of the fulfilled prophecy and affirmation of his integrity. In other words, it is impossible for God to lie. Right? It is impossible. So John's angelic guide affirms that God spoke to believers through his prophets and now through him, watch this, about the absolute certainty of things to come. Christ's revelation to John must be earnestly received because God 
avowed its fulfillment. So the question is, what, are the, what is the believer's response to the surety and imminence of the prophecy's realization? So Jesus informs us in the words he spoke in verse 7 after announcing the swiftness and suddenness of his return. First, believers must heed the book's uh, uh, words of prophecy. To heed means in the, in, in, in the text refers to keeping it and to guard it. Christ re, uh, expects that the warnings given are to be taken seriously. They are to be kept intact and guarded against unbelievers' attempts to discredit it. You know, people will call you a fool, right? They may call you radical. They may call you many things. But that's okay. Because what is happening is being internalized. What is happening to you, you know that God is at work in you. So it matters less what somebody is talking about when you know there's a work that's going on in you that is prepping you for these promises. You know it because you, you are experiencing it. So, so we need to uh, don't allow those things to frustrate you. Secondly, every word, watch this, is to be obeyed, especially because his return will be unannounced and it's going to be sudden. His pronouncement is the sixth of the Revelation's uh, seven Beatitudes of blessing interspersed throughout the book, right? Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, chapter 16, verse 15, chapter 19, verse 9, chapter 20, verse 6, and chapter 22, verse 7, and 14. All of these scriptures fortify these things that we are talking about today. So there, there is no dispute about what God is saying. It's all tied together. So for believers now, obedience to God's word is essential to having a relationship with him. When believers practice consistent obedience, they validate their love for Christ and the legitimacy of their relationship with him. Finally, God's confirmation of the truthfulness of his word challenges every believer to prioritize unquestioning obedience to it and reflecting on the promises of eternal spiritual refreshment and privileges promise should move us beyond rejoicing to living holy and obedient lives. I want you to look up the word sanctification, sanctified, uh, 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 and tie these things together. You know, we don't hear so much about holiness anymore, but it just means that you have been set apart, that you have been sanctified. You've been set apart, apart for the purposes of God, right? And so, so we are not our own anymore. I want you to look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 11 through 16 but this is a a, a very uh, powerful lesson in helping us to look forward and, and 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 i will be so glad right when this last part of our deliverance is fulfilled right in a way that that sin will be removed from the very presence of sin but we can thank god now we can praise him now and we should worship him now because as Paul says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 that he that began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So there is a great work going on inside of you so you understand and it is because you are being prepared for the promises that God has made and you are being prepared for the place that God intends to bring all those who are redeemed, who love him, and who keep his commandments. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for encouraging our hearts today. We need encouragement today. We need a, a perseverance. We need a spirit of endurance today. You know what we face. You know the, the trials of our hearts and our minds. You know, God, the, the things that, that, that affect our daily lives. 
But we thank you for watching over us and keeping us. And we pray, God, that you would give us a spirit to share our faith with others and that they might be able to embrace these promises, that, that they might be able to see you as we hope to face to face. Father, give us a mind to walk up righteously before you in the mighty name of Jesus. This world is full of sin and has nothing to offer us, but we thank you for leaving us here for just such a time that we might work out our own salvation. God, give us a mind to obey you as never before. I want to pray right now for each and every one that's going through that that's struggling, uh, that sees that the days are dark and, and have forgotten about these promises. God, we pray that you would encourage them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Help them to understand that you have laid out a detailed plan for the rest of their lives. And we pray for those, God, who are not saved. Uh, we lift them up in the name of Jesus, that you would draw them closer to thee in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to be good witnesses that we might live out these promises uh, uh, in the face of a dying world. God, we thank you for the life that Jesus portrayed, that he came into this world and he lived in perfect obedience, even death on the cross, and you exalted him and bestowed upon him a name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue shall confess. God, we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. Just know that I love you and I encourage you today to embrace uh, these passages of Scripture, particularly as we went back uh, uh, the 21st chapter and follow through and just look at the things that God has promised uh, uh, to us today. We have something to hold our heads up about even in the face of adversity. So again, until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.